My name is Christina, and I am part of a research team in Boston, Massachusetts that has been learning about moms who have disabilities. My team and I talked to 16 different women with disabilities from all over the country about what it was like being pregnant. We heard many different stories, and we're going to share a few of them with you today in this video. Most of the women we talked to were about 26 years old. For some of them, we talked about giving birth to their first child, and for others, we talked about giving birth to their second or third child. More than half of the women we talked to had boyfriends or partners who were helping them with their pregnancies, along with friends and family. We talked a lot about what it was like being in the doctor or nurse's office while each woman was pregnant. It's important for us to learn more about this because a lot of women with disabilities have high-risk pregnancies, which means that doctors and nurses have to spend a little extra time making sure they are safe and healthy. One problem we found after we talked to all of these women was that many of them felt like their doctors and nurses weren't explaining information clearly enough. For example, sometimes doctors or nurses use big words that the women didn't understand when they were talking about what it's like to be pregnant or what it would be like to give birth. Sometimes not having enough information made the women feel angry or upset because they didn't understand what was going on. Here are some of the quotes we wrote down about not always understanding what the doctors and nurses were saying. They let us stay, but for the first four nights, they kept taking her out of the room, and they wouldn't give me an explanation. In this quote, the woman didn't understand why the nurses kept taking the baby out of her hospital room. They would tell me if I ate and threw up to repeat those calories. Then another doctor would tell me, no, those calories are those calories. That was confusing to me. In this quote, the woman knew that she had to be careful about what she ate while she was pregnant, but she didn't understand what the doctors were telling her about how many calories she should be eating each day. A lot of the women we talked to also talked to us about how they didn't think the doctors and nurses were listening to them. One woman told us that she wanted to stop smoking because she knew she shouldn't smoke while she was pregnant, but her doctor didn't help her. I said I wanted to stop smoking, and she told me, well, it is bad for the baby. That is all. I was like, that is no help for me. Can you help me? Another woman talked to us about how the doctors weren't listening to her about what tests to give her baby, even though she was the baby's mom. Then I just felt disrespected because we told you no. Yes, I'm her mother. And if I would say yes, that's what goes. We also heard stories about how women didn't feel like they could make their own choices about their baby and giving birth. One woman felt like she was being forced to be part of a breastfeeding group, even though she didn't want to. I was afraid they were going to force me to do the breast group. They were like trying to force me to do it. Another woman talked about how she didn't make a decision to induce her baby. To induce her baby means when the doctors help the baby come out faster. I am more concerned about the fact that I either don't remember or was unclear on why I was being induced in the first place. After we talked with these women about what it was like in the doctor's offices and hospitals, we asked them about who helped them with their pregnancies. A lot of the women got a lot of help from social workers who helped them learn new parenting skills like changing diapers and taking babies' temperatures. A lot of women also talked about how social workers usually help them get to doctor's appointments, either by driving them or helping them to take the bus. She is the only person who can give us transportation, one woman said. Another one told us, she either comes here and picks me and my daughter up or takes us. If one of us has an appointment, she will take us to the appointment. A lot of women told us about how social workers helped them stay healthy while they were pregnant and their babies stay healthy after they were born. One woman told us how her social worker helped her to eat the right foods using an app. She made me take pictures of everything I ate. She put this app on my phone to help me because I had to walk a lot. I take pictures of what I eat and it tells me how far I am weekly. Another woman told us how her social worker comes every week to help make sure her baby is healthy and growing. She comes every Tuesday at 11 and we weigh the baby, we get her height, and we get her head measurement to see how long she's growing. Another one told us how her social worker watched parenting videos with her. She was really nice too, and she was able to give me some advice about parenting, and we watched the videos on pregnancy and stuff, and then it showed in the video what I should expect throughout my pregnancy with the baby. A lot of women also talked about how important family members, friends, and neighbors were while they were pregnant. Many of them told us how friends and family would usually help with getting rides to doctor's visits and coming with them to appointments. A lot of women liked when someone came to appointments with them. It was okay, but it was better if I had somebody with me. We also talked with women about their boyfriends, husbands, or partners who helped them while they were pregnant. 
partners were very helpful supporting these women throughout pregnancy. One woman told us, I was throwing up and my husband was so concerned about me. Try to eat anything, even a little bit. And another one said, he was involved because he ended up getting stuff for the babies and also he ended up spending his money to get the cravings for me. One woman's boyfriend was really helpful while she was giving birth. My boyfriend talked to me and when I was going through my contractions, he said try to think of something or sing something or you know, try to distract myself so I wouldn't be in that pain. So I sang a song and my boyfriend sang it with me. It can take a lot of people to help someone with pregnancy and giving birth. All of the women we talked to got help from social workers and friends and family. We learned a lot from talking with all of these women about what it was like to be pregnant and who helped them while they were pregnant. We asked them what they would say to other moms with disabilities going through pregnancy, and this is what they said. Do not be afraid to ask for help or to ask questions when confused, and having friends and family around to help was very important.